Welcome to What's a Mom podcast. You are listening to doulas Petra and Jacqueline. Motherhood can be isolating and hard. We are two doulas who want to provide a safe place to talk about all things mom. From pregnancy to birth to postpartum to parenting. Join us as we have real conversations about real life. Welcome to What the Mom podcast. You're listening to doulas Petra and Jacqueline. Thanks for joining us today. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like and share the podcast with other people who might be interested. Yeah, absolutely. We're here to just share some knowledge on everything to do with um, mom life and birth. And yeah, we hope you get something from this episode. Today, we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of pregnancy. That's right. This is something that a lot one. of people, yeah, a lot of people ask about. Especially mm-hmm. first time moms, they get really worried. Like, you know, what should I do? And what shouldn't I do? Mm-hmm. So we're just going to share kind of like our top 10 ideas of what you should or should not do. Yeah. So we'll start with the do's and then we'll go to the don'ts. All right. So do number one is do enjoy your pregnancy. Absolutely. Even in the chaos. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Petra's learning that right now. (laughs) I am. I'm already almost done my first trimester. It's crazy. Like it's just going by. What the heck? And I was sick for like three weeks of it. (laughs) That was brutal. Yeah. That was hard to enjoy. Absolutely. And just like the hustle and bustle of having four kids and being pregnant and being tired and all the things. It's true. And it's, I know it's hard to say, yeah, I can enjoy the pregnancy if you're someone who has really bad morning sickness. Yeah. Or you have the extreme fatigue. Um, if you're at the end of it, when you're (laughs) feeling like the baby's going to fall out and it's just (laughs) so much pressure down there, when you feel Mm. like you're so huge and you can't get up and down from the couch or the bed. Yeah. But enjoy it because it. it doesn't last forever. And that's one thing that I've learned, um, this past year because my daughter turns two tomorrow and we are done we are done the baby train so Mm -hmm. um you know i am so blessed that i got to have three kids and have three amazing pregnancies but that chapter is closing and i don't know it's just it's very bittersweet um Mm -hmm. you know you're just you just in that moment you're just like so like you know ready for it to be over and stuff and and then it's done and it's gone and you're never gonna have it again and so yeah it's important to enjoy every bit of it because when it's gone and it's not there anymore you miss it so there's a I'm reason that I get to live through yours vicariously <laughs> through your pregnancy. But uh, yeah. yeah, even when it's hard. It's true. Yeah. Nights. yeah. It's true. There is a reason that so many women get baby fever after. Like they, you know, later it's like, oh, like I kind of miss that. Even if it's been a hard pregnancy. Mm-hmm. You look back later thinking, oh, I really miss that. Like, it's just so amazing. And feeling the baby move for the first time, hearing the heartbeat for the first time. Oh, that's my favorite. Like, all of these milestones, they're so amazing. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. So it's important to, even in the chaos and, you know, hard times, just remember and be thankful for that baby and... Yeah, it's okay to have hard moments, but uh, just try and focus on the positive and really get as much enjoyment out of it. And uh, because, you know, it it goes by so fast. And um, yeah, I'll definitely miss those first kicks and all that stuff. 
feel. Yeah. So point number two is do ensure you have good nutrition. Oh gosh. I sucked at that with my first and second. I had no clue. I was terrible. And it's a miracle. Well, my son, he was only five pounds, 11 ounces at full term. And I lived off of ice caps and bagels. And I think I stunted his growth. So, <laughs> oh man. But I learned the third time um, I was introduced to Juice Plus, and that's just something that I did for my nutrition. Um, but it is just fruits and vegetables, and um, a lot of you know prenatals don't always have that. They have a lot of extra iron, and you're just not getting as much nutrition as you need to. And so, yeah, it mm -hmm. was a huge, huge catalyst for having a really healthy pregnancy for me for sure yeah it's true yeah and good nutrition means making sure you're getting the vitamins and minerals and whatever that you need in your diet it means it's okay yeah. to have a treat every now and then but don't every binge. now and then Pedro yeah. just kidding <laughs> <laughs> not every single night before bed chowing <laughs> down on the junk food right <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i'm not pregnant and i'm terrible at that christmas is, treats it's hard especially this time of year christmas time it's so oh hard my goodness it's brutal yeah so personally yep. when i'm pregnant i do find that i make better choices though some people yeah. are the opposite they find it harder because of the cravings yeah. But um, most of the time, like generally speaking, I'd say I'm more likely to say no because I know I'm pregnant and the baby's getting everything that I'm eating. And I'm like, oh, no, I probably shouldn't. But I mean, it could go either way, right? <laughs> it's okay in moderation. Yeah. Don't deprive yourself. But also yeah. know that that's true. That is true. And if you binge, that's not a great idea either. Just make sure you're getting lots of nutrition, good food. Um, your iron, that's one thing, is I always had low iron. Each pregnancy, the first and second, I had awesome iron this last one. But the first two, it was brutal, and I was exhausted, and it was just not fun. And there's ways that you can boost that for sure. And so, yeah, just make sure that you're eating a well-balanced diet. Yeah, It's important because, yeah, your baby needs it. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Uh, point number three would be kind of go hand in hand with number two, and that's to stay hydrated. Oh, gosh. That's so hard, especially when you're big and they want you to keep drinking so much water, but you just feel like you're peeing every five minutes or every <laughs> one minute. Yeah, it's true. <sighs> it's a Pee struggle. <laughs> a lot of women will pee lots in the first trimester because of the hormonal changes. Absolutely. Second trimester will get better. And then third trimester, because of the pressure on your bladder with, you know, everything growing and expanding, you pee lots again. And you're yeah. right. It's hard. Because you're like, oh, I'm already peeing too much. <laughs> but it's really important to stay hydrated for sure. And if you don't have enough water intake, you can get... Um, Braxton, Braxton Hicks contractions. Yeah. Yeah. You can. And, and those are yep. not comfortable when you're dehydrated at all. No. Yeah. yeah. So staying hydrated, I would say is best with water, obviously, but you can also do it through teas as long as you're not adding too much sugar and stuff like that in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then number four would be stay active. Oh, yes. That's really important. Mm -hmm. If you get lazy and you just sit around, labor is going to be much, much harder. Oh, for sure. Because you need the stamina to be able to, you know, do those squats. And um, yeah. if you're out of shape, that's not really going to go over well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Um, even even just getting your heart rate up and, you know, just going for walks. Um, the best kind of exercise is the one you'll do. And a lot of the mm-hmm. time, a lot of pregnant women just go for walks. Some do, like, crazy training and stuff like that. You know, if you were, like, um, into fitness and really going hard at it and your doctor clears you to do so, then that's awesome. But, uh, I mean, for me, I just liked, yeah, like stretching was a big thing for me. It helped Mm -hmm. me with soreness. Um, and then just going for walks, that was like an Mm -hmm. easy thing that I could do, um, and try and do every single day. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, they say any exercise you did before you got pregnant, you can continue doing. Yeah. You just don't want to all that. Yeah. You don't want to start something new. Because no. that can be hard on your body. Absolutely. Kind so, of shocks your body. Yeah. So if you're trying to conceive, the best thing to do is to be a very active person beforehand to make it a lot easier. Yeah, easier to lose it too. Yeah. For sure. And then, yeah. And then if you're staying active during pregnancy, then when you're able to exercise again postpartum finally – it's a little bit easier. Whereas if you didn't ex- move and exercise all pregnancy, it's going to be difficult to get back into it after. Oh gosh. Really difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So number five is get lots of sleep. That's hard. Especially <laughs> when you have multiple children. It can be hard, but it's important. It's very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say the best thing to do is try to go to bed early if you can. I've been trying to work on that. Um, Most nights I'm able to get to bed a little bit earlier. And Mm -hmm. if it's possible, try to get a nap in. So if you already have children, then maybe nap with your younger child naps. If you're still working while you're pregnant, it's a little bit more difficult, but then maybe you take like a quick cat nap in the break room or something, right? Set an alarm. If you're really tired, sometimes it's needed. Just listen to your body is what I always say. Absolutely. It'll make life easier. Mm -hmm. This pregnancy for me, this first trimester, I've been so tired. I mean, it didn't help that I was sick and then I was waking up in the night with sick kids too. But um, even though we're all better, I'm still quite tired. So I've been Mm -hmm. taking a lot of naps, (laughs) 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 which is crazy. But I know I just need to listen to my body. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all I Mm-hmm. it's very common and sometimes more people like people are more tired than others that's normal too yep. but you also have four children so mm-hmm. you're so busy with everything yeah. um and then you're cooking and cleaning and feeding the kids like you have to feed them like why mm-hmm. i don't know i'm just kidding <laughs> but and yeah. you have you know like you're on your own a lot so it's it's tough i can't imagine yeah but you do what you got to do. Do what you can. Yeah, exactly. Number six is do continue having sex. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can't have sex anymore. Unless the doctor has, for some reason, put you on bed rest for a medical reason. Like me. I was with my That's first for four months or something because I had a low-lying placenta. And it was really, really close to my cervix and they were afraid of me hemorrhaging. And so, yeah, if your doctor or midwife tells you you shouldn't, then obviously, but otherwise it's extremely healthy and um, it's important to still have that connection with your husband. I mean, especially because you're just good. It's important to have that connection because you're, you're going to have another baby and you don't want that to stop you. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember, you know, that. And if it's uncomfortable, that's one thing. And your partner, you know, your spouse should be, you know, understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but yeah, it's important to still do that. Mm -hmm. If you know and everything. Most good. of the time for most situations, except for like exceptions like that, it's actually very safe to continue throughout the entire pregnancy right up until birth. Um, obviously like, yeah, some things can be uncomfortable and, um, some women, their libido will increase others. It'll decrease. Sometimes it'll kind of ebb and flow throughout the pregnancy. Yeah. And that's normal either way. They're both normal, but yeah. it is important to create that connection with your spouse still. And, Absolutely. And at the end of pregnancy, it's super beneficial, actually, because of a couple of reasons. baby, yeah. Um, number one, it um, obviously, it releases oxytocin in your body. And that's one of the hormones that you need for birth to start. Uh, number two, um, semen actually contains prostaglandins, which helps soften the cervix. Yeah. Um, and number three, the movement, believe it or not, it actually soothes the baby. They don't know what's going on. So a lot of people, they get really worried about, like, I don't want to scar the baby and I don't want the baby to, you know, get poked and whatever. But I mean, honestly, that's not happening. It's a real fear. Come on now. A, lo a lot of people worry about that, but it's, it's not something that actually happens. They actually do. I've talked to so many and they're like, yeah. oh, doesn't that happen? No. No. The baby is protected. The baby is behind your cervix. Oh, yeah. The baby is in amniotic fluid. And actually the, the movement rocks the baby to sleep most of the time. And it can't break your water. So don't worry. Yeah, exactly. The only time it's not safe is if your waters have broken already, though. Then you don't want yeah. to. You don't want to because infection. Yeah. yeah. Well, not Absolutely. I don't really want to at that point anyways. <laughs> no, you're usually contracting at that point. Well, not yeah. everybody. Well, yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that depends. <laughs> it, it honestly depends. I thought my water had broken, but it really didn't. And yeah. I was like, what the heck? My water's broken and I haven't had contractions for like, 12 hours what's going on <laughs> and then they ended up having to break my water so yeah yeah <laughs> oh goodness gracious yeah okay so point number seven do gain weight smartly so there's like a saying i'm pregnant so i'm eating for two that's not necessarily true <laughs> Yeah, no, I would definitely say it is important to yeah. be careful Yeah, because you're higher you risk for um, gestational diabetes, too. And yeah, right. Yeah, so that's true. And you do need to increase your caloric intake slightly, but it's not literally having a whole extra adult sized meal. No. That every time you eat, you're going to be eating too much. You'll be gaining way too much weight. And yeah. then you're just, you're not going to feel good about yourself. Labor might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. We did talk a little bit about this with um, Sarah Klesko in one of our other podcasts that we did. Yeah. Optimal Nutrition in Pregnancy and Postpartum. So if you haven't listened to that one yet, go um, find it and listen to that one. It's a really good yeah, one. Yeah, it was a good one. Huh. She was a wealth of knowledge. But she kind of um, touched on this topic as well a little bit. Yeah, she did. It was mm -hmm. good. It was, yeah. Um, point number eight is visit the dentist. So people used to think... And um, we were like, everyone was told you shouldn't go to the dentist when you're pregnant. And the reason is because they were worried that the bacteria might spread in throughout your body and stuff like that. Yeah. But they've now um, learned that that doesn't happen. And it's actually very beneficial to visit the dentist. You just have to make sure to tell them that you're pregnant. And then um, they know what, if they need to avoid anything specifically or whatever. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, but it is important to, to do a visit if you haven't done one in a while because uh, 
there's a lot going on during pregnancy with the hormones and that affects your mouth as well. It does. They take a lot of your calcium. Yeah. So sure <laughs> a lot of the time when you're done having a baby, it's very common to have cavities. Yeah. I have heard that too. It is. Like it's really crazy, but a lot of the time so it's true. Body. Yeah. Yeah. Like even your, your eye prescription can change just from having a baby. Mm -hmm. There's so Absolutely. Many <laughs> it's crazy what having a baby also, you can get like different allergies. Like it's, yeah. yeah. Your body's very interesting. It sure is. <laughs> Point number nine is do ensure that your seatbelt is worn properly when you're in the vehicle. Oh, yeah. You can get those actual um, pregnancy belts, can't you? My friend Courtney gave me one. Mm, I've heard about them. I never use them, though. I didn't actually use it but because I can figure it out. <laughs> um, but I've heard that they have them. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Well... I mean, the biggest thing to remember is that you just need to make sure the seatbelt's not on your abdomen where the baby is, right? Yeah. So just tuck, especially once your belly starts to grow a little bit bigger, just tuck the bottom lap part of the seatbelt underneath the big bump, right? Yeah. Because if it tightened in, in a collision or like a quick stop or anything like that, you last thing you want is for it to squish the baby right so yeah ensuring absolutely. that it's positioned properly when you're in a vehicle is very important yeah that's a good one mm -hmm. um and then last one number 10 is do bend your knees or squat when you're picking something up down low that's um it's not you won't good. get lightning crotch right is that what that's for? Um, no, it's just like you don't want to hurt your back, right? That's true. You have all this weight on your front now. Yeah. Especially at the end of pregnancy. And you need to um, use your knees to bend down to do anything down on the floor. Because if you just try to like bend down and do it, you're going to hurt your back with all that extra weight. Yeah. That's and true. I mean, it's not easy doing that anyways when you have a big giant belly in the way. So like spreading your legs and squatting is honestly the easiest way anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. My I would have last, to agree. Yeah. <laughs> My last pregnancy, I remember I purposely bought a broom that had this uh, long handle on the dustpan just so I didn't have to bend down <laughs> to, to sweep it up all the time. Right. And oh Tom was goodness. like, this thing sucks. It doesn't work very well. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not bending down when I have this big giant belly in front of me. So this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> and it was nice because I was so tired of bending down, especially when I, you have other children that you have to take care of. You have to bend so much already. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. So that is our top 10 of things to do during pregnancy. Now yeah. we'll do our top 10 don'ts. So number one, don't eat raw fish or fish that may contain high levels of mercury. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't eat fish, so that's not a problem for me. But <laughs> Yeah, it was. It is important. Yeah. So um, fish that contain high levels of mercury – I think a lot of people in North America don't really eat it anyways, but that would include shark, swordfish, pilefish, and king mackerel. But, I mean, there wow. are some, some people do enjoy stuff like that. So Exotic. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why they say, a lot of people say you should avoid sushi. Um, yeah. It just depends on what kind of sushi, because there's some that you can eat, but... A lot of it is raw, and that's what you want to avoid just because it could contain bacteria in it that would negatively affect baby. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
So don't eat shark or swordfish. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I know that one was probably hard for you, Jacqueline. <laughs> oh my goodness. How was I going to survive? Actually, I read um, a story to my kids the other day, a Dr. Seuss book about sharks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. shark. And they talk about eating shark. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember yeah. my dad ate it once. Shark fin soup. We went yeah. to a Chinese restaurant. I ate nothing. I will never forget this. And we went to McDonald's for me after. <laughs> That's funny. And he ate shark fin soup. That's so crazy. So That's what they talked about in this Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> nasty. No, thank you. But that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> My so, kids yeah. were like, what? Who would eat shark? I'm like, people do apparently. Think twice before you pick up the fork to eat shark, okay? <laughs> if you yeah, learned no, anything. <laughs> Okay, so don't number two, oh. don't smoke. Oh, yes. This should be something that everybody kind of knows now. Like today's day and age, it's pretty common knowledge. Everyone talks about it. It's on the cigarette boxes. Um, you should just know. it's. It goes directly to the baby. So the baby is pretty much smoking while you're smoking if you are. So yeah. if you are a smoker before you get pregnant, um, it's suggested that you find a way to quit. Yeah. Because it's not good for the baby. <coughs> no. This one's pretty self-explanatory, though. Mm -hmm. Don't number three is don't drink alcohol. Again, that's something else. It's yeah. pretty self-explanatory. They obviously yeah. can't do any studies because it's not ethical. To, to do studies on pregnant women. Um, but they some people claim that you can have a glass here and there as long as you're not getting drunk, but the, uh, we don't know what the safe limit is. So it's generally just um, agreed upon that you just say no to alcohol completely while you're pregnant and just wait until after. It's nine yeah. months. You can make it through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So point number four, don't eat raw meat. Um, I mean, there's, this is again, something a lot of people don't really do that much. Like, um, what do they call it? Like the raw beef tartar. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a Mr. Bean episode. Where he's at the <laughs> restaurant and he orders tar beef tartare because it's the only thing he could afford. Oh, <laughs> gross! And he did. He did. He tried it and he didn't like it, but he didn't want to like offend anyone. So, so he tries to hide it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. So he hides it like in all these little places, like in the butter dish or in the salt dish or whatever, under his plate, um, in a lady's purse. <laughs> I remember the lady's purse. It was so funny. And then she opens it. She's like, <laughs> but ew, don't eat raw meat because it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I guess, one way to put it. <laughs> ew. Some no. do genuinely like raw meat, though. But they should avoid no. it. It can contain um, foodborne illnesses like listeriosis and toxoplasmosis and stuff. That is true. Yeah. So in all seriousness, just if you do like it, avoid it. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. You're good. <laughs> yeah, totally. So point number five is do not have a bath that's too hot or go into a hot tub for too long. Probably not a good idea. Yeah. So generally speaking, if you have like a, a warm bath, it's okay. But if you're in that warm water for too long, you, your blood pressure begins to rise and that's what affects the baby because then yeah. your heart beating really fast, your blood circulating really fast. Um, it affects the hormones in your body. So that's how it affects the baby. So a lot of people say like, don't go in a hot tub at all then. Um, 
I was told by my midwife in my first pregnancy that I could go in a hot tub as long as I was only in there for a few minutes at a time and I was paying really close attention to my body. Like you should never be at a point where you're like, oh, it's really hot or like, oh, I feel kind of lightheaded or your face starts to go red. That means that your blood pressure has already started to rise and it's that state. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, generally speaking, I guess it would be safer to just say avoid hot tubs, but I'd be a hypocrite if I said you have to because... I still use Somebody that. did this weekend. I sure did. <laughs> when your parents have a hot tub, you have to use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just just do it with discretion. Just yeah. Just Pay think about it. Pay attention to your body. Put yeah. your feet in. That's okay. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I don't... S- when I do go in a hot tub when I'm pregnant, I'm not Submerged. actually really immersing my entire body either, though. No. All you need is your feet and your legs. Yeah, I usually mm-hmm. go up to, like, max my chest. Like, that's, yeah. that's even, like, maybe a little too much if it's for too long. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, next one would be number six. Do not drink too much caffeine. Otherwise, you'll stunt your child's growth and they turn nine and they're still small. (laughs) (laughs) They say you could. I didn't really have much caffeine at all with my first and he's always been tiny too, though. That's true. That is true. But I had a lot. (laughs) This one can be hard for people who do tend to drink a lot of coffee and stuff like that. Yeah, especially if you struggle with energy. Yeah, or energy drinks or anything like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is it that they tell you, like, one one coffee a one day? Cup a, a, one cup a day, yeah. 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 So um, if you drink more than that before, they it's advised that you try to cut back to just having one a day then. Yeah. Which isn't the end of the world. Yeah. That's have it when bad. you wake up in the morning or have it during your midday slump when you start to get tired. One or the other, right? Yeah. Find things with natural caffeine. You can find stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, don't number seven. Don't clean a cat litter box. Yeah, if it's you, not safe. This is your excuse to get out of doing that chore. And you have good reason. (laughs) You can uh, actually get very sick from the cat poo that's in the litter box. Yeah. Um, Toxo, Toxoplasma Gandhi, I think is what I wrote. Yeah. For it. It's um, like they, it has lots of that. That's one of the main ones. Um, but there's lots of bacteria and parasites that are dangerous for pregnancy. So breathing it in is dangerous. So if you're pregnant and you have cats, ask somebody else to clean the kitty litter box for you. Yeah. We're giving you a pass for that chore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't number eight, don't carry anything too heavy. That's true. Or over your head, too, because it can affect um, the umbilical cord and stuff, too. Don't do it. I've heard that, but is it is there a science to that, or is it just an old wives' tale? They, I don't know. I've just heard that it can do things. So I just say, well, <laughs> I just never did. If anything yeah. was like, I, we actually moved when I was, when was I, okay, I would have been, maybe four months, five months pregnant, we yeah. moved and yeah, I was allowed to pack boxes, but I wasn't allowed to carry anything. Not really heavy. I carried like small things, but yeah. yeah. It's important to be careful. Yeah. If you carry something that's too heavy, you can cause strain to your abdomen. And well, if you're far in pregnancy, like at the end, you can actually cause premature labor. Yeah. Which you don't want. 
Um, you can cause um, pain in those round ligaments. Or a line, though. Yeah. Which is very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> and any point in pregnancy, <laughs> carrying stuff that's too heavy can cause strain on those abdominal muscles and create what's called um, uh, diastasis recti, which is separation of those abdominal muscles. Yeah, that's true. I had that with my first, and it is not, not a comfortable thing. No. And so you actually can find out that you have that separation of your abdominal muscles while you're pregnant. So you, lying flat on your back, you kind of pull your top half up, almost like you're doing a sit-up, and feel your abdomen. And uh, it'll make, like, if you have the separation, it'll look like there's, like, a teepee on your stomach. Like, it'll be yeah. like this big dome in the middle. Yeah. It shouldn't do that normally. So if you have that, it means that you have had a separation of your ab abdominal muscles, and you'll have to work on that after you have the baby. Yep. And I then your, your midwife or your doctor can check after you have the baby to see if you actually do or not. Yeah. There's certain exercises you can do. Yeah, and there's certain exercises you'll want to avoid as well if yeah. you do have. Yeah, that's true. I don't number nine is do not strain for a bowel movement. So when you have to go poo, don't push too hard. No, because then you get something called hemorrhoids. Yeah, <laughs> and they're super fun. Not very uncomfortable and you want to avoid that if possible yeah <laughs> um the best thing to do is to kind of let it come out naturally on its own and don't um don't push it don't do it yeah sorry i went away for a second that's okay. I don't know what happened, but. Um, so our last one is number 10. Don't overexert yourself. Pregnancy is not a time to be pushing yourself to your limits, doing as much as you can, working as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. You're doing so much work already while you're pregnant, growing a human being inside of you. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to your body. Rest when you need. If you're tired, if you're oh, out of breath. Nice. Yeah, like you said, listen to your body and just rest. Absolutely. Even if you can't sleep, just use that moment to rest and do something sitting down. Yeah. And if you have other children, that means maybe it just means you're going to sit down with them and you're just going to read some books or you're going to color with them. Or yeah. um, if you... Oh, yeah. Um, are at work, then you can always ask for like modified duties of some kind Hi. that are Hi. not as intensive. Hi, <laughs> Lorelai <laughs> came to join us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those You're done. You're okay. Those are our top ten do's and don'ts of pregnancy. I learned a lot. I did too awesome great tips yeah well hopefully you guys learned something as well and thanks for joining us yes thanks for being with us until yes. next time what, what the, the mom? Mom?